Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. Um, I am going to start now, obviously, I'm hoping that um, people are still kind of joining will join as we get going and just get to miss me doing my boring intros. But no, thank you very much for, for joining us today. So this um, today we're here to talk to you about kind of actual cost effective desktop as a service using both Microsoft Azure and um, obviously Nerdio. So um, it's going to be a really interesting session today and hopefully you'll find it beneficial whether you know a lot about Azure and Azure Virtual Desktop and a lot about Nerdio or you know nothing about the two. And that's the whole point of today. So for those of you who um, don't know me, I'm, I'm James Dell. I'm Associate Director and uh, Associate Director and Head of Technical Architecture for Planet IT. I've been in this game for far too long, and for anyone who's joined a Planet webinar in the past, you you will have seen my face, and you will have seen me talking repeatedly about everything: security, Azure, cloud, you name it. I've been talking about it. Um, I'm here today to ultimately guide you through some of the simpler stuff, and then hand over to Gavin for the more technical stuff. Gavin, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself for the people that have joined us today. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, James. Nice to meet you all. My name is Gavin Connolly and I am field CTO at Nerdio. Um, really looking forward to today's webinar and uh, and the session today. So uh, looking forward to jumping into it, James. Perfect. Now, great to have you with us and I'm looking forward to showing everyone what we've got to show them. So um, I would be in trouble if I didn't go through this slide. Um, I say that every time I do this, I think I've done it so many times I could probably do it in my sleep. But for those of you who don't know who Planet IT are, we are that kind of one-stop shop for all things IT. So everything from outsourced IT support through so, um, through fourth um, and third line escalation, IT procurement, cloud specialists, you name it, we're here to help. Ultimately, the way that I look at it is my team's job and my job is to make sure that we're well, bringing the right solution to the table when we're having conversations and that's across the entire IT spectrum. So today we're very specifically looking at the cloud and bringing the right solution to make the most out of desktop as a service. And, you know, from a planet point of view, we're into our 20th year of business, actually beyond 20 years now. Um, and we're trusted by a number of household names and you can see some on there. You might see yourself on there, some names that you recognize. Ultimately, um, Planet is built on trust and you'll see that most of those big names that are on that page have been with us for 10 years plus as customers and will hopefully continue to do so for another 20 years um, as we continue to grow. So um, it's great to have you part of the Planet family. So really getting on to the, the subject at hand today and for my bit as I said I'm going to kind of do the high level piece and I suppose what I wanted to start with was kind of what is desktop as a service in the terms of what we're talking about today. So DAS, desktop as a service, is a high performing, secure, cost effective type of desktop virtualization. DAS frees businesses from tethering their computer operating systems and productivity software to any physical hardware that they own. Instead, businesses can use DAS to access virtual desktop that's over the internet from a cloud provider. And I suppose the key pieces there is it's high performing, it's secure, it's cost effective, it is virtualization, but ultimately it's from a cloud provider. We're not talking about old school virtualization of operating systems. We're not talking about um, providing some kind of remote desktop environment that you're going to have to deploy kit for or anything on premise. When we're talking about desktop as a service in the terms of today, we're talking about Azure Virtual Desktop. However, let's demystify that a bit further and let's not just say AVD and stuff. Let's kind of look at what the differences are, right? So many of you joining this call will have some form of RDP or remote desktop services environment on premise, you know, whether that's directly from Microsoft, whether that's a Citrix from a Zen Apple Zen desktop product, whether that's a, a VMware product with like VMware Workspace One. Essentially, they fall into that first column on those sli that slide there. So they're a remote desktop services product and they are what I would refer to as legacy. They are built on premise. They are built around traditional technology. They're built around you having tin and deploying TIN with a virtualization platform on top of it, with operating systems on top of that that you then present to users and they access via either terminal um, services via um, remote desktop on their physical TIN, which also has an operating system installed on it, or via a thin client or a zero client or something of that, um, that ilk if you're using Citrix. Ultimately, they're legacy, they're on-premise, they're managed by you completely end-to-end, -end, and they always have complex deployment and licensing requirements. Something as simple as RDS has a number of servers that are required to run a session host, to run the associated pools with it, to deploy licenses, to manage web front ends. It's complex, right? 
Then you have the halfway house, which Microsoft launched a couple of years ago in terms of Microsoft 365 and then Windows 365, because Microsoft cannot name anything in a way that doesn't confuse me when I'm trying to read it out. So Windows 365, they are Entra ID or AD on Azure joinable machines. So that's Azure AD services. They're managed in the cloud, they're cloud only, and they're not customizable beyond the size. Now, if you've used Windows 365, these are a modern workplace subscription, as it were. They, they sit in the middle, they're essentially attached to a 365 environment. They are virtual machines, but to a degree they are like saying, here's a private desktop for you that runs in the cloud. They don't give you any of the features that you would have got with RDS, and they don't give you any of the features that you will get with AVD. They kind of sit in the middle. There is a use case for them, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. I just wanted to make sure that we covered why that sat there. And then the piece that we're really here to talk about, which is Microsoft Azure Virtual Desktop, which is the best way I can put it is by is taking remote desktop services and putting it on steroids. So it's a cloud or on-premise solution. Now the little asterisk say it's on-premise if you have an Azure Stack HCI solution. It's not on-premise if you're just deploying it on your servers. That would be an RDS setup. It is a modern approach. It's secure. It's scalable. But the biggest pieces is but the biggest pieces of the puzzle comes down to the fact that it's managed by Microsoft. The responsibility that you take is so minimal compared to deploying an RDS environment. You're not responsible for the infrastructure, the connectivity, the, the tools for giving people access via the web browser. All you're responsible for is making sure there's an image there that has the right applications you need on it. Now, it's not as simple as that, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be here today talking about it, but that's the way I want you to look at it. When we're talking about today, we're talking about RDS, we're talking about complex tin that you want on-premise. Azure Virtual Desktop is modern, it's scalable, scalable and it's a global solution. So let's dive into Azure Virtual Desktop a little bit more and some of the benefits. The first benefit when we talk about Azure Virtual Desktop is not only can it deliver traditional Windows Server operating systems like RDS would have done, so you know, 2019 or 2022 or 2025 when it comes out and shared environments on those, but it can also deliver multi-session Windows 10 and Windows 11 desktops and give you access directly to applications as well, rather than having to do a full dive into a OS, you can dive into an application. There has a huge amount of reduction in overheads because you're not having to manage a lot of those systems, a reduction in cost which comes directly related from that. So by pooling users and being able to scale around your user base, you can reduce costs. So rather than having to have those 12 big servers there to run your RDP farm for your DR environment, you can do that on a single host that scales up as and when you need it. Alongside that, because it's built around the Azure network and the Azure framework, it has a very simplified image management point of view. So you're not having to think about it in terms of, oh, I have this really complicated image library and I have to know where my ISOs are and I have to know where copies of disks are, all these out of box management stuff. It's much simpler. You can use your existing licenses where eligible, and I'll come on to licensing in a section, in, a, in the next section. But ultimately, you can leverage licensing you already have and it auto scales. And that's where we're going to, you know, when I hand over to Gavin, we're going to get into more detail about scalability and all those kind of things. But ultimately, that's one of the biggest powers of Azure Virtual Desktop, but potentially one of the biggest challenges is around scaling. Yes, it can scale massively with um, AVD, but it's also a bit complicated to do on your own. And that's where the, the tool set from Nerdia really comes into its own. So let's talk about what you can run on. Azure Virtual Desktop and Azure and what you should be running, because I think that's always really important to talk about. So the idea of Azure, of Azure Virtual Desktop is that you can access your applications and your desktop from anywhere on virtually any device. If it's got a web browser, if it can run RDP, you can, you can get to your environment. So whether you're giving people Chromebooks and they're using a Chromebook to access a Windows server or a Windows 10 desktop, or where you're giving someone the ability to use their own device to access it, it essentially removes that barrier of going, well, what is the device? Now, that can be hugely beneficial. If we talk about the education space for a minute, if you're an education organization and you're allowing, bring your own device and you're saying, right, we want to allow them to bring whatever device they want in, so we want no barriers to education, but we want them all to be able to use Photoshop, well, some of those devices won't be able to run Photoshop. So going, right, well, what we can do is we can deploy an AVD environment that can run the Photoshop that they can get access to, that's the win, right? But it's removing that barrier to entry. 
It is a secure environment and it's customizable with user experiences via Intune or via other configurations to make it feel like a user's desktop. You can ultimately, as I mentioned, you can satisfy the application. So you're streaming just the application to users from your AD, AVD environment. So the back end, the user doesn't see. They don't see the desktop. They just see your application. We do this with a number of customers where they have like a terminal server and um, traditional CLI based application they have to publish to users. And they're currently doing via IDS and having to get a user log onto a machine to run a essentially a command prompt window. And we just present that command prompt or that CLI based application through the environment. And you gain the, the, the efficiencies by migrating anything you have existing in a VDI environment to the cloud. So your Citrixes, like I mentioned, Zen App, Zen Desktop, there's the benefits of moving those to the Azure virtual desktop platform. Because ultimately AVD was born out of the idea of unlocking kind of this hybrid work scenario. You know, it really took off um, you know, late 2021, we saw a huge uptake in this and it continues to grow year on year. But ultimately, you know, the fact that you can allow people to access a secure desktop where maybe they can't copy and paste data outside of the environment, they are locked into it so you get great data protection or the ability to scale hugely. Go right, well, we're an organization which around one day of a year, we go from being 50 users to 500 users because of the type of work we do then you've got the ability to scale up to do that with the environment without having to buy tin that sits there and ages out. As I mentioned around the education space, it supports bring your own environment, sorry, bring your own device environments and it enables you to just give access from any device, personal device, work device. It doesn't matter what platform you can give access to it. Where we see loads of people kind of dipping their toes into Azure Virtual Desktop will be disaster recovery going, well, if I lost my entire office space and we don't have these PCs anymore or people lose their laptops, how are we going to keep working? Well, having a standby scenario or environment built on AVD can be a huge win for you. As I mentioned around the kind of high capacity computing where you need to scale up and you need to support specialist workloads, you can also do that for temporary workforces where you go, we need to be a bit more elastic, right? With, you know, we grow massively for Black Friday or into the Christmas holiday period, and then we contract again in the new year. Well, the, the scalability of the platform allows you to do that. And ultimately, it supports mergers and acquisitions where you're buying a company out and you're trying to securely move them from their working environment into yours. It's a great way to go, well, no, you're going to work on your bit of tin that's from the current company, but we're going to make you work in our environment and start moving them across while you do that transition. And I've seen that work in a number of scenarios really well over the last couple of years. Now, I mentioned earlier on that I talk about licensing because it's Microsoft licensing can never be simple. Um, I'll try to make it as simple as possible on this slide. Ultimately, to access Azure Virtual Desktop, to use Windows 10, Windows 11 multi-session, if you're sat in that client eligibility pool, so if you've got Microsoft 365 E3, 5, A3, A5, or student use benefits, uh, 365 um, F3, Business Premium, or any of the Windows 10 and 11 enterprise education or VDA, li VDA licenses on E3, E5, or A3, A5, you have access to use the multi-session and bring your own license to it. If you don't have one of those, you can still run an AVD environment, but you will have to license the environment separately. If you're using the Windows Server instance, so you want to go traditional and present everyone with a 2016, 20, 2019, 2022, 2025 server environment, then you need to have the traditional RDS cows in place and the correct licensing around those. Ultimately, the virtual machine, the storage, the networking can be consumed. You'll build the same way you'll build for everything else in Azure. This is more around client access licensing. So it depends on what kind of environment you need to present to them, what licensing you need. But if you already have RDS cows, licenses that you previously used for on-premise, you can move those and use those in the Azure environment. So Microsoft give you great flexibility in this. And I think it's one of those things of what I'll always say when it comes to licensing with Azure is um, if you've got questions, just reach out to one of the team. We have a dedicated licensing team internally who can help you understand whether what you've got is going to work when you move over or whether you need to change a licensing model. It's never black and white with Microsoft. It's always a little bit gray. So just um, be a bit transparent on that one. And I suppose <clears throat> kind of coming to the end of my section, I just wanted to talk about the architecture because I think I've mentioned a couple of times around AVD and the fact that it's managed by Microsoft. And obviously, 
what that really means, I wanted to kind of show you in black and white. So from an end user point of view, you go to the web portal, you log on or you open um, your RDP tool up and then you can connect into the session. And beyond that point, it's managed by Microsoft. So the web access, the diagnostics, the gateway, the management, the broker, the load balancing, that's all Microsoft's problem. The linking to Entra ID, that's Microsoft's problem. The actual underlying operating system, that's Microsoft's job to present to the user. Ultimately, if you build a custom OS, all you're doing is going to feed that image into an image library, and then it's Microsoft's problem to manage. And the compute, the storage, the networking, the, all these your pieces, that's Microsoft's problem. Suddenly, that makes more sense to me from a point of view as, a, as someone who's you know, involved in a business going, actually, the responsibility, which previously as an IT manager would have been on my plate to go, is the power up? Is the calling up? Is the server up? Is the network up? Do I have the right images? Do it, you know, is the storage running correctly? Is the performance there? All that's gone. All I'm saying is, does the user have a device with connectivity to the internet? Can they get to the Azure portal? Great. Congratulations, Microsoft. Shared responsibility. How about you have that? That's the way that we're looking at it. And that's the way you should look at it. You should, it's empowering you to make the most out of it. So um, you will get a copy of these slides after we're finished. You can see this architecture in more detail. Appreciate it. it's a whistle stop tour from my point of view. But what I want you to take away from, from my point of view is that actually it's Microsoft's problem, not yours. So at that point, I'm going to hand over to Gavin to talk around how Nerdio wraps around Azure Virtual Desktop and how you can make the most out of it. And you haven't got to listen to my voice anymore. No, that's super, James. Thanks so much. It's a great, uh, a great summary, and and leads nicely on. Look, I think, you know, from where we're sitting now, coming into kind of Q2 in 2024, um, the the virtualization landscape um, has experienced the perfect storm. There's lots of changes out there with the traditional vendors in the space, the Citrix and and VMwares of the world, and uh, ultimately, there's a lot of, um, you know. Uh, outstanding kind of customer, perhaps negative sentiment that 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 is arising from those changes, and ultimately from that level of uncertainty. The 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 positive news, I suppose, is to say that you know there is a solution out there that customers now are starting to look at and seriously consider, and have been doing so for the, for the past number of years. We're really starting to see that momentum and that ground well groundswell um, to this uh, type of solution. And you know, I was I was on my travels about as I do, and I was uh, visiting Scotland uh, the week before last. And uh, on my travels, I was in my virtual desktop on my Mac device, and I was in the browser edge using Copilot, and I was looking at a YouTube um, video in 4K, and I re from my virtual desktop, and I realised, you know. We're, we're seeing the future of, of end user computing now. So I kind of changed the video and I, I started typing in because I was because I was uh, traveling through Scotland, visiting customers, uh, you know, what to do in Scotland. But it just kind of shows you kind of where we are now. I think there's lots of big changes. You know, the Windows 10 end of life is, is coming. Uh, Copilot is becoming more and more of a consideration. And uh, there's lots of changes where virtualization is becoming the answer to many of the use cases that that you mentioned James from both existing virtualization and end user computing customers to people now finding new use cases or, or their first use case um, so it's very exciting times and you know as, as James mentioned the the kind of trend that we're seeing is towards uh, that Microsoft Azure virtual desktop solution um, and, and we've seen in September of last year, Gartner released their DAS Magic Quadrant that had Microsoft top and to the right. And there was some interesting stats in that Magic Quadrant. It said that 90% of cloud desktops, desktop workloads lived inside of Azure. So Microsoft have done a really good job of making Azure the cloud of choice to run virtual desktop workloads, desktops as a service workloads. And interestingly, 60% of those uh, workloads were being run using Microsoft's native technology. That is the, the RDP protocol. And what we're seeing now is Microsoft investing heavily in that user experience, that RDP protocol. We're seeing lots of improvements in the form of the new Windows app that they've released, that, that client uh, on, for, for end users uh, endpoints. We're seeing 
RDP short path, which is their UDP uh, technology and lots of other things, watermarking, screen protection, so on. Lots of great um, advances in the technology from an RDP perspective. So customers now were starting to see shift in, in great numbers to this AVD solution. However, there is a challenge where, you know, some of the tooling and, and particularly around the management is, is lacking and some customers try to look at DevOps pipeline infrastructure as code to kind of bridge that gap. But ultimately, that's not, uh, you know, that's not a purposeful build, build solution. You know, it's, it's not what infrastructure as code is made for. You can deploy something with DevOps or with infrastructure as code, but you can't really do your day two operations and management. And particularly, as James mentioned, your scaling with, with infrastructure as code. It, it's not really a viable solution, especially at scale. So that's where Nerdio has kind of seen the gap. And, you know, to, to James's point as well, organizations are starting to choose a model of mixing between AVD, for kind of broader, more you know, more advanced use cases, Windows 365 if they have kind of a quick turnkey use case, and Intune to manage their their endpoints, and that's where Nerdio has seen that kind of trend. So Nerdio is a bespoke solution that is 100% built and focused around the Microsoft technology stack, specifically, and and you know, historically with a with a focus on AVD, we're now broadening into some of those other spaces that I've mentioned, and we are. 100% um, marketplace focused. Um, so customers, I think 95% plus of, of customers in EMEA um, transact, they, they procure Nerdio through the, the Azure marketplace, which is great because if you have any sort of Azure uh, commitments, uh, Microsoft Azure commitment agreements, um, you can you can utilize them to procure Nerdio, which is really positive. Um, so, so what we have is Nerdio has built this purposeful built bespoke solution specifically to optimize, enhance, um, and you know improve that native Microsoft technology stack. And this really is a a partnership focus on customers. We are customer led. You know, there's a reason why we only focus on Microsoft solution. It's because of that stat on the last page that said 90% of people doing desktops in the cloud are doing so in Azure. Um, so we are very much led by customers and customer sentiment out there in the market. Um, and we work hand in glove with Microsoft. You know, there's not a day that goes by in my role that I don't speak to somebody at Microsoft, that we don't do a shared webinar or we don't work on a customer problem together. And that's especially true as well at an engineering level where both of the product teams and engineering teams are working hand in glove to ensure that, you know, our roadmaps are aligned and we're making sure that all the needs are met that, that customers might have out there. So, you know, like I said, Nerdio is a solution focused on Microsoft's technology. What do we do? Well, we help to accelerate the deployments of Microsoft's technology. We help to optimize and minimize costs and, and spend in Azure, and we help to reduce complexity through simplification, simplified management, and automation of your image management and application lifecycle. Uh, we do this and, and our kind of history has been in Azure Virtual Desktop. That is what we're known for. That is where we play best. But as we've gone on now, we've broadened our solution out to Windows 365, now to AVD on Azure Stack HCI, which just went generally available in February, and now Microsoft Intune as well. And we have some unique aspects of, of Microsoft Intune that, that we um, that we look at and, and that we can help with. Um, from a you know architecture perspective or, or architecture perspective, we um, are deployed exclusively from the Azure Marketplace. So if you go and search Nerdio Manager for Enterprise, you'll find um, our solution in the Azure Marketplace. You can click Create and Deploy, and that will deploy the number of services that we need to run the Nerdio platform. So Nerdio is deployed within customers, tenants, and subscriptions. It's it's kind of low maintenance. There's there's no kind of maintenance needed. It all it all is self-contained inside a resource group within your tenant and subscription. Customers really like that because they get to control it within their tenants. They get to uh, decide where it's deployed. They get to lock that down and harden it with some of the Microsoft security technologies as well. So customers really like that. 
Um, so when we deploy that, we deploy an app service, a, a key vaults, uh, an SQL database, some automation accounts, a log analytics workbook, and some app insights accounts as well. So we use them different services within Azure, and then we leverage or, or the Nerdio app leverages Grab APIs then to manage and manipulate and control the resource groups and subscriptions and build out those host pools, those virtual desktops and, and the different uh, components that are needed to run those and to scale those. And um, from a Nerdio, the company perspective, Nerdio, the company doesn't get to see any of your data. That all stays and resides inside of your Azure tenant and subscription. So com organizations really like that because it's locked down, it's secure. We do get to see some license usage for billing and some feature usage just for our own kind of uh, improvement, um, you know, feature improvements perspectives. Um, so that's kind of essentially in a nutshell where Nerdio sits and then kind of focusing in on um, on AVD for a moment. If, if you're used to maybe some of the traditional vendors like a Citrix or a VMware, when you use them technologies in Azure, you end up using their control planes. Whereas with Nerdio and AVD, uh, you know, uh, this solution, you still use the native Azure Virtual Desktop components and, and control plane. So from a client on the endpoint, you're still using your remote desktop or your Windows app. From the agent on the virtual desktop, it's still the AVD agent. You know, Microsoft, as, as James alluded to, takes care of all the gateways and the brokering and um, the service. So all of that still resides and is maintained and, and is an evergreen platform managed by Microsoft. Nerio then becomes the management bubble wrap uh, that we wrap around that service and, and essentially becomes the alternative user interface to the Azure portal for managing Azure Virtual Desktop. And in doing so, then we can help uh, broaden out the capabilities um, and, and optimize and, and simplify that environment and, and that solution. So we help to do that in three buckets, and we'll come back to these in a little bit. But the first one is to reduce the Azure run cost. The second one is to improve security, mitigate risk, and improve resiliency. And the last, but, but certainly not least, is to simplify and automate the management of those virtual desktops and the images that you need to maintain those. Moving on to Azure Stack HCI, then for a moment, AVD on Azure Stack HCI. This just went generally available in February. This one is an important one to kind of check the box of certain use cases where organizations have a requirement to have an application or certain data inside of their own data center that they manage. So it's a huge kind of checkbox now to make this solution viable to all organizations. What it means is you still leverage the Azure Cloud Control Plane, so you don't need to deploy your own brokers or gateways or anything like that on-prem on in your data center. Um, what it does is it does expand out to those different use cases, whether that be for data sovereignty reasons, whether it be for you know those more legacy applications or client server apps that have latency issues where the desktop needs to be close to those uh, to, to the back end of the application and, and that resides on prem and for one reason or another can't migrate into the cloud. It is exciting because it does mean that Windows 10 and Windows 11 multi-session is available for the first time on-prem as well. So that's really positive. And the, the one thing to note though, is that although it's an on-prem um, solution, because you are hooking into the AVD control plane, there is still a consumption model to the billing. Uh, but the positive thing is Nerdio has just released um, auto scaling for AVD on Azure Stack HCI into tech preview. So really excited for that. And you can see that the, the consumption model is basically one cent per core per hour. So about $28.80 per four core machine for 24 seven for a month's use. With our Nerdio auto scaling, much like we do in you know AVD in the cloud, we can reduce that cost and, and bring that down to as little as $2.40 per user per month based on four users per four core machine. So really, really um, good optimization there from a cost perspective. 
we also have broadened into Windows 365. And as James alluded to, Windows 365 is a more turnkey solution than your kind of more um, you know, broader and, and, and more uh, complex AVD. Um, you know, Windows 365 is good for those kind of um, quick use cases, those kind of simple use cases. AVD is for more complex kind of enterprise use cases, um, but we do help with the management of that, especially if you're doing AVD and Windows 365, we bring that all into one end user or, or admin, sorry, admin user portal. Um, so that, that includes provisioning the cloud PCs, managing those cloud PCs, adding in cloud PC resiliency or, or helping with that and, and deprovisioning of the cloud PCs as well. So some really good kind of uh, added uh, capabilities there um, from that single pane of glass. Again, Windows 365 is a more simple solution to manage, but if you're managing more than one solution, it's nice to bring them all under one user interface. And then with Intune, we are introducing some really interesting and exciting things in that space. So we have faster app delivery. So we bring in application deployment and we can install those apps in a machine context, speeding up the delivery and the reliability of those application deployments from an Intune perspective. And then we also have policy rollback and change tracking. So in Intune today, if you make changes and push out a change and something goes wrong, something breaks on the endpoint, you don't really, you know, you have to remember what you've changed and there's no way of tracking what changes were made. So we introduce full change tracking as well as being able to roll back the policy to the previous working state, which is a huge kind of bonus and checkbox. And then we, of course, bring that simplified management from bringing that into the same portal where, especially for smaller or, or medium sized organizations where one team might manage AVD and Intune and perhaps even Windows 365, um, you know, you can do it all from one single pane of glass. So really good benefits there. So jumping back to Azure Virtual Desktop, where we'll focus on for the remaining of, remainder of the session, let's look at those three buckets that we talked about earlier around that simplify and automate of the, the kind of image lifecycle and desktop management, the optimize and scale, and the mitigating of risk and, and protecting those desktops. So firstly, the simplifying the management of AVD. Uh, we can help manage and, and build those master images, the, the, the golden images. So in AVD, you build out a single image or, or many images if you have multiple use cases, but you have a master image and then you take that image and you uh, then build out your different virtual desktops based off a copy of that image. That process to manage in AVD natively of creating that image and uh, pushing that out to your various hosts, your, virtu your various virtual desktops is quite time consuming and, and a little bit overly complex. Um, with Nerdio, we br bring in a very simplified way of creating those images, of managing those Im images and bring building around a kind of an image update kind of automated life uh, cycle for those images and, and the applications that you're going to install on them. So we can automate the patching of those images and, and the uh, installation of the latest version of applications. And we can do that every week or every month. We can even do it every month and, and let admins pick how many days they want to do that after Patch Tuesday and then simply re-image the hosts with that new image in a very kind of simple, simplified way. We'd done an event um, in London a couple of weeks back. And, you know, asking around the room, they said there was a couple of people that were doing native AVD today, so AVD without Nerdio. And they said that they reckon it took them between two and three hours to kind of manage a single image. Um, and, you know, some of them had five, one of them had five images, the other one had 10 images. So for them, it, it was taking them quite a lot of time to, to manage and patch those um, images in a month, um, which for some organizations, and, I, you know, I've, I've heard some horror stories where it, it just means that they don't, you know, manage and, and patch those, those images. Nerdio brings that down to, a, you know, a good 50 15, 15 to 30 minutes per image. So we really kind of drive down the time it takes. And in fact, you can set up automation where it's really kind of no touch then, you know, um, you, you can leave that and, and kind of automate that and let kind of the, the scripting within Nerdio take over and do a lot of that management for you, freeing up lots of time and resources to 
focus on other things. And we also introduce help desk tools. So we have a, a dashboard where you can see all of the active sessions within an environment, and then you can take actions on those sessions. So that'll be things like shadowing a session, uh, session controls like logging off a user or disconnecting a user, sending them a message. We also have the ability to reset their FS Logix profile as well. We have a full library of scripted actions and Azure runbooks. So Nerdio comes with over 50 different scripts that you can run from, from that library. And you can, of course, bring your own as well. So those uh, that library includes things like updating win to Windows 10 or Windows 11 latest versions. It includes things like installing Office 365, optimizing Windows for AVD, optimizing Teams for AVD, optimizing Edge for AVD, shrinking FS Logix profiles, deleting old FS Logix profiles, lots and lots of different scripts, um, installing language packs. I know that can be a pain. Uh, we can do a lot of that automatically through our scripted actions. We also can manage and configure FS Logix profiles as well as manage and optimize uh, your storage, uh, including as well auto scaling that storage as well. And we have lots of integrations with other uh, platforms and, and alliance partners. So we integrate with GitHub and Sapago to pull in uh, more uh, PowerShell scripts. We integrate with Azure Insights, Sapago, and ControlUp for monitoring of, of the sessions. We integrate with things like Power BI for what we have is uh, our user cost attribution. So we have a cost reporting where we can break down costs on a per user basis, and we can push all that out to Power BI. We integrate with um, application uh, modernization tools such as AppCure and Remote Tree. We integrate with, we, well, we have a full REST API as well, so uh, customers are leveraging that to integrate with other monitoring tools and also ITSM tools such as ServiceNow. So lots of great and strong integrations there um, from a, a platform perspective. And, you know, virtualization and, and virtual desktops and end user computing, it's all about the apps and it, it's always been about the applications and Nerdio has created a unified application manager where we can hook into different application repositories and then manage the deployment and updates to the various endpoints that you might be managing, whether that's for phys uh, physical or virtual. Um, so that might be a Winget repository, which we, we can integrate with the public Winget repository. That's the Microsoft Store, or we can uh, have customers bring their own private Winget repositories. We can also uh, hook into SCCM as well as Intune for Intune apps, as well as MSIX applications or, or the new app attached V2 as well. Um, and we also can integrate with shell apps as well. And then from Nerdio, you can then deploy and update those out to Intune Managed Windows devices, as well as your AVD desktops and even your Windows 365 Cloud PCs. So that's single platform for managing those applications. Um, likewise, like I said, we also have that kind of help desk uh, tool where we can see those user sessions and take actions on there. We also have what we call our um, end user self-service portal, and this one is getting really good traction and, and gaining popularity, especially for kind of uh, power users like developer use cases, like IT admin use cases and a few others. So admins can allow end users to access a, a part of the Nerdio portal to then manage their own uh, uh, Azure Virtual Desktops. So that includes things like power management, it includes things like increasing the size of the VM or changing the VM size, changing the disk type, as well as uh, we've just introduced as well the capability to um, add in applications, you know, give, give basically a, um, a curated list of applications that they can install as well as a curated list of scripted actions that they can run as well. So really, really uh, interesting use case. They can also, we've just released as well, the ability to opt out of scaling and power management for, you know, if developers are running batch jobs overnight and things like that. Um, so some really interesting things. These apply for single session 
user desktops. So it doesn't apply to multi-session, but for single session use cases, um, really interesting and, and gain lots of popularity from a developer use case and, and other power user use cases. Next one, very important one is to scale and optimize cost for cloud savings. Um, Nerdio has the most sophisticated AVD scaling tool in the market. We can help to save on disk costs, we can optimize your storage and your profiles. We can uh, scale that um, those Azure files for your FSLogix profile storage. We have multi schedule and multi trigger scaling capabilities. This one's really popular, particularly in education and in healthcare. We can get really granular when these machines power on. You know, it's it's critical because of the cost model. You know, you're uh, spending every time that these machines are powered on. So we need to make sure that they're powered on when they need to be to ensure a good user experience, but balance that by making sure that they're powered off whenever they're not in use so that you're saving on costs. And we so have some clever different tricks and, and, and clever things that we do to make sure that we are getting the most out of the platform and optimizing the costs as much as possible. We also have, you know, a scale history to show you when those machines machines are turning on and off, as well as a reserved instance calculator. We have that end user self service, which can be a power saving tool because you can give those developers lower baseline machines and allow them to scale up to uh, VMs for a limited time. That's all time limited as well. I, I didn't mention that. We also have the Nerdio advisor as well for right sizing, and I'm going to show you that in a second. So here we have the user cost attribution and we can break down costs based on a per user cost or a per host pool cost. This one's really good for kind of reporting the cost of AVD back to the organization and back to the business. Uh, we can actually uh, push all this out into Power BI and create some clever dashboards as well with the with this tooling, which is really good. We also have our right sizing from our Nerdio advisor tool. So we can basically set admin teams can set parameters around the RAM and CPU usage. And then based on that over a period of time, Nerdio will come back and recommend if you need to upsize or downsize your virtual desktops. And this is support for both single session and multi-session. And you can see there the example at the bottom is that, you know, it's it's telling us that we're on one machine and, and if we switch to a different machine, we'll have a saving. And all we need to do is click the apply button there and that will then change that machine on the next power cycle to that cheaper version of the machine. So there could be big cost savings. We had uh, a customer a couple of weeks ago that that utilized this tool and they were saving, uh, I think it was over $80,000 per month. So almost a million uh, dollars per year. Um, so really uh, useful tool. And speaking of cost savings, you know, we can break down those cost savings uh, with that kind of above row there that you see. So with auto scaling and power managing the machines, we can save somewhere in around 35% of the cost. Burst capacity and just in time provisioning, we can save around 5%. Reserved instances and right sizing, we can save another 5%. Our OS disk swap technology and, and shrinking of the OS disk, we can save a further 10%. And auto scale on storage and shrinking those profiles will save about another 5%. That's about 60% or, or, or more, you know, give or take, but it will all depend on your own use cases and, you know, the, the type of usage that you have in the environment. Uh, we have, uh, you know, to, to show that in, in real terms, I've taken some real examples from real customers and, and shown some examples. So the first one there on the left, we have a global insurance agency saving over $110,000 per month. Uh, that's a 26% reduction for them. That's for over 13,000 plus users, okay? Um, so we can see large organizations now are using AVD and Nerdio together to ensure that kind of best in class uh, experience um, and, and that optimization of the platform. Similarly, government department saving over $200,000 per month. That's a 67% reduction for them. So they've gone really good with their optimization and that's for over 9,000 users. 
and we can keep going down through the examples all the way down to kind of those smaller kind of use cases. Local government, they're saving over four and a half thousand dollars a month. It's a 48 percent reduction for them. That's for 470 users. And we have a wealth management organization saving over 15,000 users. That's for 46, uh, 46 percent reduction for 170 users. You know, and, and we've had examples like we, we have a customer actually in Ireland based in Ireland. The, the, there was less than 30 users but because of the workloads, they were saving over $1,700 uh, because of the workload and the work style. So, you know, really kind of a broad mix, you know, but come and come and talk to, to James and the team, come and talk to us at Nerdio and we will kind of guide you on what's possible in terms of those cost savings. And just as important as cost savings is those, uh, you know, sustainability savings as well with those carbon emission savings. So data center carbon emissions are between two and a half and 3.7% of total worldwide emissions. That's more and, and that's higher than aviation, which is really hard to believe. And when we look at Microsoft and, and the other hyperscalers, it said that their data centers are three times more efficient than local data centers or data centers that individual companies are using. We see Microsoft pumping in millions of dollars into their sustainability of their Azure data centers around the world, which is really impressive. Moving from on-premise VDI to cloud VDI, that also changes the scope of the emissions from scope two to scope three. So scope two is any electricity consumption that you're using yourself or any purchases. Scope three is indirect emissions. Um, so that includes emissions from kind of third parties, etc. So, you know, moving from on-prem into cloud can change to from scope two to scope three. That was kind of good enough, um, you know, up until about a year ago. Um, but in the last kind of year, six months, the EU now have started push down legislation where organizations of certain sizes have to also report on scope three before they only had to report on scope one and scope two. Now they also have to report on scope three and that's where this auto scale technology can help to reduce those scope three emissions as well to help with that and, and to help with that kind of um, uh, emission savings. We have now introduced eco savings into our cost modeler calculator. This is our Nerdio modeler. Um, the Nerdio modeler is in our tool, but it's uh, there's also a free light version. The light version doesn't include the sustainability, but the light version is available on our website. So if you want to go and run some numbers, crunch some numbers on there, you can. I'll, I'll put a link into the chat towards the end of, of the of the session, but you can go and start modeling what would the cost be for your use case, for your workload, inside of AVD and what would that look like when it's optimized with Nerdio. Um, so really good tool there to, to kind of help with that. And then the last bucket and the, and the final piece is all right mitigating risk. And, and this one's especially important for disaster recovery and business continuity. So first and foremost, when we can automate those app and OS updates, that is inherently you know less risky and, and kind of more secure than just doing it kind of ad hoc and, and kind of uh, doing it every couple of months, right? If you can automate that to happen every month, it's more secure. Secondly, you know, the other risk is is DR and, uh, you know, is, is a data center falling over and that can happen in the cloud, but it's getting rarer and rarer, which is good. But for those times, Nerdio has a number of tools in place to help you with that DR scenario. So we can deploy your host pools as an active active split across different um, regions, which is really good. We can also break down your host pools into multiple zones. Every Azure region is broken down into three logical zones so we can display, uh, deploy the machines into different zones. And we also have what we call the capacity extender. So if you pick a an Azure data center, let's just take UK South or UK West, there will be a limited uh, number of each VM sizes available in each region and they can run out. It's rare that it happens, but it, but it can happen and it does happen throughout the year. So Nerdio has a clever tool where it allows admins to pick alternative VM SKUs that will spin up in the event that one of those, uh, one of the original SKUs is unavailable, hence extending the capacity of Azure. Um, we also have Intune policy compliance checks that we can bring in as well to Nerdio. We also can help make it really simple to apply RTP policies. That includes watermarking, blocking screen capture, blocking clipboard and printer and USB redirection. 
Um, we have built in and custom or back roles so we can really lock down the Nerdio portal and we can also lock down and harden the Nerdio platform or the Nerdio enterprise application itself using Azure private endpoints as well. So we can make this uh, solution really kind of locked down and secure. As we move forward, you know, we, we have some uh, interesting new capabilities as well uh, being introduced from an audio perspective. We will introduce continuous machine learning and um, infrastructure optimizations. We have also just introduced generative AI to the platform, and I'll touch on that in a second, as well as an environment assessment mode that we're going to release. We also have some policy protection and versioning that I've already mentioned from Intune, and we are going to continue to improve that unified application management connectors. Um, talking about that generative AI and focusing on that, Nerdio have announced, we announced at our NerdioCon event in February in the Dominican Republic that we would release uh, three different assistant tools uh, based on OpenAI. So the first one is Nerdio Assist Pro. That's a first of its kind purpose-built EUC virtual assistant. It's a tool that sits inside of the Nerdio portal and it will, you know, you can type in, hey, how do I do uh, a certain task inside of Nerdio and it will go ahead and pull information from the Nerdio knowledge base to tell you how to go and execute those changes. Next coming up, and, and that one's available in Tech Preview currently, uh, next up is Nerdio Script Pro. That's going to be an assistant that's going to help you to write your PowerShell scripting. And that's going to come soon uh, later in the summer. And then the final one is Nerdio Insights Pro, all around reporting and insights, and that's going to come later in the year. So we're really excited for these and what they look like. There's just a quick uh, view of what that Assist Pro looks like in the Nerdio tool. So you can ask it that question of how do I change session hosts on a uh, session limit, sorry, on a host pool, and it'll tell you where you, where you find that within the tool. And um, that's leveraging OpenAI and Cosmos DB technologies uh, under the hood. So we're really excited about that. And again, shows where Nerdio is going from an innovation point of view and what we're trying to achieve. From the future of Nerdio, you know, the, the future is bright. You know, when I think about where the technology is going and, and that technology stack, we're going to take some some time now. We're, we're working with customers at the moment to understand what they need from a reporting and insights perspective and some have some exciting things planned in that space. We're going to keep going with the generative AI piece that, that I've already talked about. HCI stack is going to be a big focus for us. We're already seeing really big interest. Uh, we just went to uh, tech preview with that now in, in April. So uh, we're, we're already seeing massive interest from that perspective to do uh, Nerdio and AVD on Azure Stack HCI. We're also going to keep going and broadening out those capabilities and the value add to Intune and, and modern endpoint management, as well as broadening that unified application management uh, enhancements and, and keep bringing in different repositories and making that whole process a lot more seamless and, and, and improving that the whole time. So that was a little bit of a whistle stop tour. You know, I think um, I hope what we've done is kind of showed you around this solution, where it's going, why there's this word association. When you say APD, people automatically start talking about Nerdio as well. We're very excited for, for our position um, in that space and, and for things to come. And, you know, Coming with James coming back in, it's it's just interesting, and I'd love to get your take, James, as well. We are really starting to see the groundswell. Some of the largest customers across uh, EMEA and across the globe, and and particularly here in the UK and in Ireland, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of customers now looking at this solution and and moving towards this solution as their go for future proof strategy, where they can kind of lower the TCO of their virtual desktop solution. So I hope that was uh, useful and insightful. And uh, yeah, I'll pass back to uh, to James. Yeah, uh, thanks, Darren. So yeah, from my point of view, we are seeing a, a wave of people. It started with a small swell right when AVD first came, kind of came out, and it's just grown and grown and grown over the last couple of years. And you're right, anytime someone says, I'm looking at Azure Virtual Desktop, the first conversation point for me is, have you looked at Nerdio? It's the, have you looked at the wraparound? Because I think AVD is great, but having been you know, an Azure engineer for a long time, um, it's really complicated and, it make, and it's really easy to make mistakes. And we've seen customers where they've, they've got themselves into expensive messes whilst trying to do something that should save them money. So you know, it's, it's really important to, um, to mention that. Um, 
there is one question that came up, which um, was um, those features you mentioned on the improvements. Will they be eventually? Uh, will they be available for deployment in Azure Stack HCI? So, so the last. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So, so for now, the the Nerdio kind of platform itself is only going to be available inside of you know Azure Cloud, not into Azure Stack HCI. Um, that might change in the future if if there's enough demand out there. But for now, the the strategy is Nerdio kind of stays in in that kind of Azure Cloud. Um, in terms of some of those features, though, some of those features. Uh, will kind of work today with Azure Stack HCI, the scaling being some, although it's a little bit nuanced because there's different cost models, different things, you know, uh, swapping disks in uh, AVD in the cloud is very cost beneficial if you can swap out them disks to a cheaper disk when the machines are powered off because you still pay for the disks when the machines are powered off. That's not really as relevant on the uh, on-prem side of things. So there's there's some nuances and changes, but uh, you know, scaling is still there and there's still a big cost savings to have by wrapping Nerdio around that. Things like the unified app management piece, yes, you can definitely use them for your images that, that are going to go on-prem. Things like the AI, yes, you can kind of, you know, the the the, the assistants are going to be able to talk you through deploying Stack HCI, well, AVD for Stack HCI from a Nerdio context and, and different things like that. So yes is, is the broad answer, but obviously there's some nuance in there. I appreciate that, Gavin. I suppose for me, just to to wrap it up and say, I appreciate that for many of you, you're using RDP, you're using Citrix, you're using Z apps and desktop, all those kind of products. And you're like, yeah, this sounds great, but how do I do it, right? So um, I appreciate that it can be quite a steep hill to climb to try and redirect your VDI strategy from where it is at the moment. So what we've done is we've put together a um, an assessment, which is um, delivered by one of my technical architects. And we look at your current VDI solutions, regardless of what that is. And we can help you discover, assess, review, and ultimately report on the, the way to move forward. And the key is, um, at the moment, we can do this for you for free. So if you are looking at this and saying, is moving to AVD the right solution? Is Nerdio the right solution for me? What can I save? All those kind of questions. Um, and is my environment right to move? Then simply reach out. Um, I'll book in one of these assessments for you and we'll get you the data and then it's your decision. This is a, you know, there's no obligation, no charge on all of those kind of things. You literally can just book it in, take the data and do what you will. If you decide to not move or move with someone else, that's not a problem. For us, it's about giving you the understanding of whether desktop as a service is the right thing for you and how you can make the most of that. So there's limited availability on those. Um, so for those of you who have joined today and those of you who are watching the recording when this recording goes live, um, reach out and you should be able to grab yourself one of those free assessments. Um, if you haven't already got my details, my details are on the screen, so you can reach out to me via Microsoft Teams because we're openly federated, or you can email me. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn and all those other kinds of things as well. If you wanted to reach out to me directly um, and discuss this further, there's no kind of um, no no harm in reaching out, right? Um, I, we are open to any more questions. You want to drop questions into the Q and A or into the chat. Um, if not, um, it goes without saying thank you very much for your time today and we really appreciate you joining us and for this, as Gavin mentioned, it's a whistle stop tour, right, of, of a very complex subject, but hopefully it's whetted your appetite a little bit for what you could do and where the future is and obviously ultimately where you can save some money and um, you know, do a bit more for the planet and do a bit for sustainability. So, um, Gavin, I really appreciate you joining me today for this and um, sharing your insights. And hopefully, we'll um, we'll do one of these um, down the road when there's some more updates to talk about and uh, tell people about how amazing it is and what they're missing out on. Yeah, absolutely, James. Absolutely loved loved the session. It was great. Love love presenting with you. Thanks everybody for joining. Like you said, James, we're very much customer led and customer driven and customer focused. So it's all about what's right for customers, right? And and this is a this is a viable solution now that lots of customers are turning to. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to to follow up sessions. Um, Gavin, there's one more question that's just come in. Um, yeah. So it's, um, it says, I'm aware I can't deploy the Nerdio backend to our Azure stack, but can we still use it to manage it, so to manage yeah. it with all of the features? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's, there's one or two kind of nuances that certain features won't be there, but the vast majority of features are going to work, work there. Um, 
what what it, what it comes in is Nerdio kind of has that will break down the different host pools into dynamic host pools, static host pools, and now we have the new hybrid host pool. So it's just it's just another host pool type, and it's you know we kind of see it as just another region, except this time you're managing the region. Um, so yeah, very much uh, you know Nerdio will go forward and, and kind of treat that as as the same. Or like I said, there's one or two little nuances there where it doesn't make sense or it's not as relevant for a certain feature to, to be there on, on Stack HCI. But uh, yeah, for the most part, there will be feature parity. Amazing. Well, um, it, well, I think we've reached the point where we've reached time as well, perfectly at uh, three o'clock. So yeah, thank you very much, Gavin, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Thank you for everyone who's joined and um, I'll see you on, on the next webinar, the next event. So thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All the best. Thanks.